So a funny thing has happened where I honestly think people do get uh, a little bit emotionally attached to the bit of software that they use as an operating system. Of course. And that is something that companies can very much exploit. Be that Apple and trying to, you know, lock you into a walled garden, or be it Windows, trying to ram your operating system full of advertisements. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about Windows. It's time to move the industry uh, further away from Windows, if at all possible. There are other alternatives that are free and open source. They currently have issues. Those issues are getting better. But ultimately, in a world where Microsoft wants to put literal advertisements in File Explorer, maybe this is the only option that people have got in a world where... I mean, you're looking for a document that you want to open in Microsoft Word, Mm -hmm. and on your way to your document, you find a goddamn paid advertisement. Yeah, can you? I could not believe this when you first shared it with me. This is the uh, this is the future we're going to live in, which is uh, someone has control over what's in their operating system, what you see every day, and of course, as they already do, whenever you freshly install Windows 10 and you open your Start menu and it's full of Candy Crush and Netflix and Spotify and YouTube. Uh, they're going to show you advertisements and try to, you know, make a little bit of their money back in some cases. Or even in the case of Microsoft, a lot of it's not make their money back. It's get you to make sure you're using their software by, you know, firing, oh, get Office into everything that happens. Yeah. And obviously as PC gamers, Windows is the only option or has always been the only option. Now, finally, uh, the tide is genuinely turning. Uh, It's going to be a bit of a slow burn, but... As I'm sure someone in this marketing this video will be, get ready to ditch Windows for PC because that time is going to be upon us way sooner than anyone expected. I cannot wait. I mean, yep. be, I, I'll be straight up. I hate Windows. Um, <laughs> after using Mac OS for a long time, I, I just hate Windows. Yep. Uh, it falls over so much more regularly. The amount of times you just need to do a clean Windows install. Mm-hmm. The, both me and Matt have had to do clean Windows installs lately. Yeah, just so Explorer um, doesn't die randomly. But the thing is, there's a, a bit of nastiness in both of the big operating systems. Uh, you know, with, with this business here, yeah, sure, Apple don't ram full of, you know, paid advertising and, and all of that, mm-hmm. but you're a little bit more locked into their garden. Now, the good thing about Mac OS is you can sort of break out of that garden because it is still a feckin' computer, but that's the whole thing of, you know, no tracking, maximum privacy. Those are all great. They're things I like, but also they're really good for Apple mm-hmm. because it's like, yeah, come into our garden. Everything's safe and happy and hey, buy our shit. Whereas then over in, on Team Microsoft, we are seeing them, I mean, they practically nag you into getting Windows 11. I've had to get the Windows 11 pop-up to piss off so many different times. <laughs> they're yeah. ramming it full of advertisements. Um, they're, you know, they try to get you to use Bing on Edge. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever, have you ever used a Bing to do a search? Have you, Matt? Yes, it's awful, it's useless. It, it just goes wing, bing, advertisements. Do you want to do a quiz for reward points? <laughs> it is an utter goddamn hellscape assault. And as much as I love, I genuinely love what Microsoft are doing in gaming, Yeah. on the Windows side, it is it is rough. Yeah, and but, of course, yeah. correlating with that time where, you know, they, they fired Barnacles and, you know, all of the test programmers, it seems, mm-hmm. uh, they've, they've also just started to have more issues with Windows as well. And this is why alternatives are great. And the Steam Deck could be truly leading the charge. Yep, it is the it is the wedge in the door that uh, everyone over at the Linux community has long wanted and needed. Yeah. G- Gabe and... Gabe? Praise B, etc., etc., yep. the memes, mm-hmm. uh, has long wanted Linux to be the way to play games. Because, uh, because I know freedom. there's a, a lot of people, they're like, ah, no, PC Master Race and PC equals Windows. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know if PC equaling Windows was Microsoft's uh, ad campaign or if it was the Mac versus PC. Oh, it was, it was definitely that, yeah. Because <laughs> if it was the Mac versus PC thing, then it's like, God damn it, Apple. You All you succeeded in doing was making PC gamers think that Windows equaled PC. Yeah. When Gabe, who everyone seems to love, and we all love Gabe, yep. when Gabe thinks PC, I think Gabe wants to think Linux. I mean, obviously... that's free, yeah. it's open source, it, there's... Not going to be the bullshit. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing where there's no corporation having control over that. And I think people now are, rightfully so, more concerned about that than ever before. Because time and time again, as the as the corporate world gets more and more cutthroat with competition, it's the user who suffers. And there's the only way free of that is to go to free and open source, which sometimes works really well. Historically, hasn't worked sometimes. But in this case, it looks to be... You know, there's a, there's enough people pushing back against the tide that it'll work. Yeah, 
So for this, a Windows Insider build of Windows 11 came with banner advertisements in, uh, yeah, in, in File Explorer. Yep. Right? Now, Microsoft said that this was an experimental banner that was not intended to be published externally and was turned off. Which basically just means, oh, sorry, you weren't meant to see that. And they could just say, oh, it was a thing we were testing. We're not going to do it. The fact that they were testing that means it's something they're investigating. It means they're they're trying to think of how they can get more ads in your windows. Yeah. And that just is a massive no for me as a user. Yeah. I mean, it's also a massive no, like, from the kind of more legal perspective. Because the, the specifically, they were trying to push Microsoft Editor in this Insider build. Like they do with OneDrive as well, existing Windows 10. It was like, oh, back up your files. We use OneDrive for everything. That's obviously advertising their own product in their own system. But that's what got them got by uh, the EU before, based on them just firing in their Microsoft stuff by default. They're like, no, you you need to offer competition for browsers. People need choice. And this is where they're just going to, they're likely, I mean, no one stopped them on the OneDrive thing. They don't say, hey, use OneDrive to back up your files, or maybe use uh, Google, or maybe use Dropbox. They don't do that. They just go, yeah, here's our product, buy it. It's quite strange because I do feel it would be bizarre if Microsoft was compelled to ask you if you want to use Google Drive or Dropbox. Yeah, it's weird. I, I just don't think, I actually don't really think that's particularly fair to Microsoft. No. Um, I would more just say, uh, you know, make these be like, at, at most, like make them be sort of like check options at the start, not pre-installed, maybe something yeah. you opt into. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not 100% sure, but the point basically is, I mean, how many more things are you going to open up in Windows and see an advertisement? Yep. And Windows 10, of course, already has loads of these. <laughs> Vile. Like, you know, disable lock screen ads. Do you know who does lock screen ads? Who? Amazon. Oh, so they yeah. do? That's right. You can yeah. get a cheaper version of the Kindle Fire. Yeah. Or, you know, whatever, their their tablet, if you're willing to have lock screen ads. It's like a tenner, isn't it, to get them turned off? Something like that. Yeah. Now, I just think about it, I'm like, is, is Windows not, like, full price and you buy it? Oh, yeah, $140, what? I yeah. think, for a full one. Obviously, you can get it for cheaper, but, you know. So you can also stop uh, suggested apps from appearing in the start menu. You can get rid of the nagging taskbar pop-ups. You can prevent notification advertisements for, from, uh, from appearing, uh, remove advertisements from File Explorer, uh, and of course, uh, avoid the built-in solitaire game, which I didn't know this, but it's got a 10 bucks a year subscription fee. <laughs> yep, it, and Minesweeper, because they have uh, video ads inside them that are 30 seconds long when you're trying to play solitaire or trying to play Minesweeper. Unless you pay, which is you know you you go you can you know rose tinted goggles or whatever else for the for the old days, but didn't have ads to play Minesweeper and Windows uh, two thousand, not even Vista did that. Yeah, uh, and then of course removing ads from Microsoft Inc. Workspace, which I think seven or eight people use. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now what we want to talk about is what are the alternatives, mm -hmm. because one way to get Microsoft to be more reasonable mm -hmm. is to but with our wallet and use another operating system. Yeah. Uh, so on what used to be my main uh, you know, gaming machine, I'm going to try to put Linux in that and see where it goes. Mm -hmm. On this, using Crossover, like I can play World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV natively yeah. in this, and they run fantastic, um, but I want to use Crossover. You've tried a little bit of that on yours. You're also investigating Linux yep. for your Ryzen build at home. Yep, definitely. So the thing, though, is... That, like, that involves me getting crossover. Mm. Or, you know, playing the seven native M1 games. Yeah. It involves you getting crossover. Or maybe installing a Linux distro. That's a bit of work. So, Steam Deck is important, then, because it's going to push this market share without getting people to do fiddly bullshit. Exactly. Because we don't like fiddly bullshit. It's not fun. No. Nope. So, here we go. This is from uh, from Jason. So to quickly hop into some testing from uh, Jason here, basically Forza Horizon 5, it's like basically the same. Windows is like one FPS mm -hmm. uh, more. Um, Shadow of uh, Tomb Raider on Windows is an average of 45 on the low preset. On SteamOS, it's 46. But where we see the better results is in fact in Cyberpunk 2077. On the low preset with medium textures, it's 18% faster on SteamOS. Mm -hmm. And this is great. But more importantly, with significantly higher minimum frame rates. Yeah, so it and feels better to play. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's the really important bit. Mm -hmm. Now, this is from Tom's Hardware, uh, reporting on Linus Tech Tips' uh, work. Mm -hmm. So, LTT ran three gaming benchmarks in their video for Hitman 3, Doom Eternal, and Elden Ring. 
SteamOS beat Windows 10 considerably on all three titles. Hitman 3 was the most noticeable, where it delivered a 19 FPS average for Windows 10 and 34 for SteamOS. Now, 30 FPS is not, it's just not playable for me. Yeah. But for a lot of people, for a game like Hitman, where I guess it's not mega Twitch, and at least depending on how you're playing, yeah. that's the difference between this is a thing I can play and this is a thing I cannot play. Yeah, that's that's exactly it. Where this, you know, especially if the Steam Deck isn't your primary gaming thing, if you're doing this because you're aware of something and you just want to get a feel for your game and it's it's fine, not great, but fine, then that's perfectly fine. And if I look here, you know, Doom Eternal, yep. <laughs> Steam OS, average of 60, Windows 10, 47. For me, that's the difference between unplayable and playable. Especially in Doom Eternal. Elden Ring, Steam OS, 37 FPS average, Windows 10, flat 30 FPS average. And in that case, I would play it on the Steam Deck with a locked 30. Yep. So that I have, like, you know, just nice, consistent performance, which, you know, an, a an average of 30, well, if that means I'm dipping down to 28 or 27 and it's all inconsistent, that's an awful gaming experience. Yep. And then there's obviously the Elden Ring specifically. We'll talk about this a little bit later, but it has other improvements that make the game feel way better that's not represented in just frame rate. Yep. Um, of course, Microsoft, you know, they're calling yep. out that they're, you know, some of their stuff's running really good here. So that is definitely good to see. Uh, now for Vulcan then. Mm -hmm. So uh, to talk a little bit about Vulcan, uh, we, I just I like this you know uh, this this comment um, yeah. just about how crazy fast things have changed in Linux. It used to be you know playing games with Wine is impossible. To this brand new game runs better on Linux. Yeah, and that's the thing we've all heard of Linux <laughs> gaming for such a long time. We've all known about Wine and stuff like that. Yeah, um, but you know now it's. What's happening? Yeah, now it's there's yeah, here. there's enough support in the community. There's enough support from specifically so much of the work from Steam and Proton is doing a lot of the like heavy lifting here to mean that Windows games just you know with little effort from the developer, which is where the problem always lies for these things. It's because Linux is a small community because it's like I think it recently broke one percent on Steam for the first time in a long time right. of usage, which is pretty insane. But um, that's still one percent, which means. As a developer, you're not going to go, well, we'll put like, you know, $100,000 in development for a port for this 1% of user base. You're not going to do that. But the fact that so much of this, especially on the anti-cheat stuff, is just Proton will do most things automatically for you. The developer needs to send one email or flip one switch in the back end, put a file in the right place, and now easy anti-cheat and battle I run perfectly fine. It's like all of the... It's, it's just free. It's entirely for free because of all this and... Because of some of the, uh, I, guess, I guess, the idiosyncrasies of DirectX 12 versus Vulkan, this is where you get like the pre-caching thing going in, where yeah. the the uh, bleeding edge experimental uh, build of Proton enabled uh, shader pre-caching and pre-compilation in Elden Ring, which meant that all of the stuttering problems that you were having in Windows with DirectX 12, gone on, um, I mean, there's still some stuttering depending on what you're doing, but because of Steam's work, you can play... Elden Ring on PC reliably without stuttering. It's Absolutely. just it's just on Linux, which means <laughs> yeah. that's where that comment came from. It's this brand new game probably runs better on Linux. And that is one one small data point. There are so many things that are just wrong about gaming on Linux, but it's getting better. And it's getting better at an accelerated rate. And if the if the rate of change in today's world actually means anything, you know, it'll be two years time we'll be talking about why did we ever game on Windows? And I guess I don't really know what the plan is here, but mm. if SteamOS ends up being a really large part of this, yeah. at what point do Valve just let you put that on a machine? Well, this is where we do have to talk about like some of the some of the gains here are like specifically because the Steam Deck is you know specific hardware, whereas a lot of the problem with this is you just won't have you can't do a bunch of shader precaching for loads of hardware profiles. You need people to run it compile the shaders and then have that stored on steam for it to give to other people which is going to be difficult when you start to have like you know you start to get the exponential yeah. uh, amount of build uh, uh, varieties going on with special driver configs being different as opposed to just literal hardware so the steam deck is like an outlier because it's this is the hardware we yeah. know this is the hardware but any software improvements here any usability improvements anything on proton that pushes the boat just a little bit further can have this entire community jump on and go, we'll use this, we'll push this further. And that's where that's where I think the future is ultimately going to be. 
Hopefully, hopefully, yeah. hopefully, <laughs> I really yeah. hope Valve is successful in getting yeah. Steam OS out there more. Yeah, I mean, this is—it's never going to be everyone's run Linux, but it is going to be a lot of these problems smooth over. So, if you, the consumer, are tired of Windows being, you know, basically up in your face all the time with everything, or you just don't trust Microsoft, then there you go. Yeah, this is an option. Now, Lutris. Yep. It's time to talk about Lutris because this is actually. Uh, quite an exciting project that's a project that valve are well they're supporting by sending yeah. its developer a steam deck to help get lutris out on deck faster mm-hmm. now linux experiment has got a great video explaining it so um Excellent. that's a channel to check out generally if you're interested in linux mm-hmm. essentially right imagine it's gog galaxy but there's no store it supports humble gog steam epic supports emulators open source with loads of contributors and allows for user source scripts for custom installations of games meaning that all of that annoying tinkering yep. some smart fuckers done that and you just get it yep i mean you're still going brilliant to, yeah. yeah you're still going to maybe run into some issues but like lutris is how because the reason i actually heard of it first wasn't even the story of valve sending them the deck that was like where a lot of people were like oh lutris what's that for people who outside of Linux, anyone in the in, in, in the community obviously knows about it already because it's pretty big gut. But I uh, was looking about World of Warcraft on Linux and I was like, oh yeah, okay, so Lutris handles that. Okay, sweet, great. And it just, everything, it, it comes with the, uh, I think you need to install some separate wine stuff, but you don't have to tinker with it because it does all the custom work for you know, your user scripts, all the different wine builds and stuff. Kind of like Crossover does a little bit yeah. on Mac, but it handles a lot of the really annoying bits here and there. It supports all of your uh, other stores in the same way God Galaxy does. And if basically, if you can play the game on Linux, you can play it through Lutris. It also has like Proton, because uh, basically it has its uh, own kind of configs of Wine that you can run through. You can run through Proton instead, which is obviously Steam's uh, add-on to Wine. There's also, they're called Runners, and they basically have, comes pre-configured with a bunch of emulators. So you just plug in the, the ROM that you definitely ripped yourself. 100%, 100% please. Uh so that's just like people are calling it like the a combination of a game preservation platform and also an active game using yeah. platform which is if it's if you want a one-stop shop for playing video games Lutris is the closest thing you're going to get and one of the things that i like about because uh, one thing people might not know is that mac os is um you know it, it's it's, it's unix based right yeah. so uh I definitely wouldn't say it. I, I'm trying to work out what the ideal word is, but you know, there's a there's a common ancestor, let's just say. Yeah. So as an example, uh, Crossover um, handles a, a lot of the similar things on Mac. So, you know, it's, if I wanted to play, you know, insert new AAA game, I could probably play it on this just fine via Crossover. Custom, custom wine stuff there, yeah. Yeah. Now, Crossover people... Uh, they, I think they only make up like 4% of the contributors to wine, but yeah. they make up like 50% of the commits to wine. <laughs> yeah. So me purchasing crossover and doing all of that stuff is also supporting the wine project. Yep. Right. So it's just the, you know, the more the Mac OS stuff goes forward, the more the Linux stuff goes forward, the more the Mac OS stuff goes forward. Yeah. And then that just means that gaming outside of windows is generally stronger which is good because competition is good. It's absolutely what we need. Now, one of the things that's going to matter, though, is, okay, if I do all this shit, what games can I play? How's it going? So, Matt, you ran it through your Steam library. Yep. So, my Steam library is interesting. It is um, definitely a little bit weighted to older games because a lot of my uh, Steam library was built in the 2011s, 2012s, 2013s when I was a student. And I was just like, I'm going to buy every game that's under a fiver and play the shit out of it. That was a great time. Uh, But... With with tinkering, which is the old way Proton DB's default appraisal used to work, which was, this is the stuff. If you fiddle around with this, this is the metal that applies. You can get to twenty seven percent of my my library is playable in platinum, which basically means flawless. Might take a couple uh, settings to get there. Thirty four percent gold, fifteen percent silver, seven percent bronze, and five percent borked, which you know means that generally speaking, I think, I think they kind of say gold and platinum's like the this is perfectly fine, this is perfectly playable. Yeah. Silver is like an asterisk, bronze is a lot of asterisks. So that means that like 61% of my library is perfectly fine. Obviously that's not enough for like, you know, for me to throw any Windows machine in the bin. But it does mean if I wanted to play, depends on what game of course, uh, like I couldn't go and play Destiny of course because uh, their approach to... You'd be banned. Yeah, and I wouldn't want to play Fortnite anyway, but same, yeah. same thing applies, they don't want to support the platform. But... It means I could easily have a uh, Listro, uh, Linux distro that I run and play games on a lot of the time and don't really have to think about it until I hit the, oh no, don't play that. That's not going to work. And then I boot to Windows. That's a possibility that I never thought was going to be there. But apparently it sort of snuck up on us. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then the thing that they their new appraisal method is like the tiering thing. But to them, it's how it plays without tinkering, which I think to most of you is going to be what's important because you're not going to want to go, okay, I want to play my game. Right. Let's figure out how to get it to work for three hours. I mean, that's a satisfying approach uh, a lot of the time. For but, some of us. Yeah, but yeah. only for some people and only if you've got a lot of time to spare. I mean, I know there's uh, anyone who's played Skyrim with mods before will know sometimes you spend six hours getting your mods set up and as soon as they work, you don't play because you've done the fun bit. 100%. But their new appraisal is just how does it play without tinkering? And that's 17% in tier one, 25% in tier two, 11% in tier three, so 41%. That's 20% less, but that's still approaching half of my library is completely playable without any tinkering on my half. And which I is in, which is not what I ever expected. Yeah, w with the deck too, there's just more of an incentive for developers. And so that's, that's exactly it. Where yeah, the hope is yeah. then for the newer games that those are defaulting into yeah. tier one and tier two. Yeah, and a lot of a lot of the older stuff is where the incompatibilities lie at the minute because the very specific things, as opposed to the more universal, everyone knows how to use DirectX reasonably well, so they're not going to do any bullshit. And that's going to be like it'll just get better over time. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really it for the video. Yeah. Um, basically, getting a little bit suspicious of what's going on in Windows. Not particularly yeah. happy. Also, freedom is good. Yeah. And uh, look, things over in the maximum freedom side of the picture are actually getting way, way, way better. So, yep. this, uh, you know, this is good news for all of us. Even if you plan to stick with Windows, mm -hmm. it's still good news for you. Because yep. it means that, uh, you know, it means there's more competition. It means Microsoft will have a little bit of pressure to you know do good instead of consolidate and uh i was gonna say consolidate and eviscerate that's <laughs> maybe not it but you know consolidate and yeah. monetize or uh, whatever well it's not like they're not trying because they like in their credit they are they did just push direct storage api yeah and i think the for first pc game that supports that oh maybe not anymore mm -hmm. the first pc game that was going to support that was forespoken but that's now been delayed to october so i think another game might come out first uh taking that spot but like they are kind of pushing performance a little bit because of the Microsoft gaming side of things. But that's the thing where, uh, that's why I included the Aaron Greenberg tweet, where Microsoft gaming's approach, as opposed to, yeah, it's weird because they're called Microsoft gaming, but they kind of mean Xbox when they say that. Um, Microsoft gaming's approach is the Phil Spencer approach of just let people play games wherever, which means it's not like they're going to arbitrarily say, like they're not going to support the Game Pass app on uh, yeah. like Linux anytime soon because that's a Windows and Microsoft thing. But they are couldn't completely just go. Yeah, you want to get? I don't think Halo Infinite runs, but you know, here's oh, the here's Ma Master Chief Collection hmm. runs on Mac. Yeah, which what? is just a funny thing to see, especially <laughs> yeah. knowing that uh, Halo Combat Evolved was originally a Mac game yeah. that was announced at like an event with Steve Jobs. That's right. A bit, a bit loopy. <laughs> yeah. So I think <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a thing where if you are looking for what this looks like in five or ten years. I think we're in a substantially better spot. That said, right now, definitely for power users because performance is a bit low, especially on NVIDIA cards because of NVIDIA's uh, proprietary drivers. You know, it's not perfect right now, but it's getting better. And yeah. that's what we uh, need. Get ready in the next five to 10 years to ditch Windows at long last. The future is actually pretty exciting. Yep. And I think on that note, that's it for us. Uh, let me know, have you had any forays into Linux gaming? And uh, with that, we'll see you next time.